waiting for you if you had to leave I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea I just wanna say that I feel That our love is real Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal We are two crazies from South Africa that is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck everything and now we are living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Guess what? Um, Frick is in South Africa. Um, not under very good circumstances. His dad passed away. Oh, I need to get this camera right. Yeah, so um, he's in South Africa. I'm on my own in the boat here in Antigua in the Caribbean. And um, he had to relinquish captaincy to me. I'm only leaving in about a week's time. So I'm getting the boat ready, vinegar all over the place, um, trying to curb mildew and stuff like that. And um, no, just basically getting everything ready to leave Sisu for at least three months. So a lot of stuff to do and we're in the tropics. So it's all new to me. So a lot of stuff that I need to do that we didn't do the last time when we left the boat in Cabo Verde so I'm learning as we go along but today I decided I am going to do single-handed sailing um, this is my first attempt at single-handed sailing but I must admit I'm gonna have another soul on the boat with me um, just to to keep an eye on on things but um, I'll be doing everything myself and then I'm just going to go sail out of the bay and up the coast and back again. We'll do about a four hour trip and see how it goes. So, yes, I'm pretty excited. Um, it's going to be my first attempt. There we go. Okay, crunch time has started. So this is it. There's no more turning back. First things first, I started the engines and checked that the water was running. And now I'm going to lift the anchor. So there's not a lot of wind, so hopefully this will go well. Oh, this is disgusting. Ew. This is creepers. Okay, then I put it on this one. Oh no. Everything's full of air. It's not here. Sorry guys, the excitement was so high that day, I completely forgot to check the GoPro settings. But basically, I mowed it out of there, and I raised the Genoa, and off with the engines. Okay, so what I was explaining to Gary there is how to do a automatic tack on Sisu. So first of all you need to make 100% sure that you are on wind vane. Now as you can see we are currently on a port tack so what we're going to do then is to go then you press these two buttons in at the same time. So you press them in at the water at the same time and then the nose will go through the wind and then once the, the Genoa starts backing up then you start winching in and then if you're on a starboard tack then you would do the other side then you would be going this away so um simple one two three and you tacked Then coming back as well we've never gone on a mooring ball so um, we decided to leave Sisu rather on a mooring ball and not at anchor when we're gone um, the marinas are just way 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 too expensive so um, 
Uh, we've got the added expense now of plane tickets, which was not um, in our budget for now. So a mooring ball it has to be, which is pretty, pretty still pretty expensive. So I've never, we've never picked up a mooring ball before. But next to me, I've got South African friends. He's going to be on the boat with me, and then obviously he's going to assist me with picking up the mooring ball. But the guys at the marina said they're going to come out with a dinghy as well and obviously help with the whole process, passing it on. So, yes, so a lot of first times and a lot of news today, and I'm pretty excited. Okay, so we are approaching the mooring ball area. Um, Gary is preparing lines in the front, and I've got to look out for a red dinghy. There it is. It's going to show me where to go. These boats in front of me but I'm going to go behind them so I can turn into the wind to the mooring ball. This is getting pretty scary. On the joysticks. That is happening in the front there. I will try and keep Sisu's nose in the wind. So we are looking onto the ball there. So the day sail completed successfully and we are on a mooring ball successfully so time to turn off the engines and we are on the mooring ball Sisu's first mooring ball ever so what we've done is she's on the on the bridle over there and then our own well from our front cleats we've got a secondary lines we've got them on the sides well done skipper this is not going anywhere. wonderful solo day and you pass with flying colors i'm very confident <laughs> thank you you did perfect so it's, great it's, control nice speed was it good was yeah. it good enough slow is always good yeah slow nothing is wrong with that <laughs> slow is pro yeah. that's what we've learned so and Gary, you an angel. He is just <laughs> the best. <laughs> so, in between cleaning the bulges and getting rid of all the mildew, because we're in the tropics now, so this is gonna, this is a very weird and different experience for me. So, I need to figure out how to contain my mildew if it does happen. But I've got a lot of remedies that I got from other yatties that I'm gonna apply. So part of the advice that I got is a vinegar cloth that um, over and above just wiping the whole inside of the boat down with vinegar. Um, I might as well do this. I'll show you what it looks like downstairs. All the whole of Sisu is in chaos. Oh, never had such a chaotic boat. But that is the first bin that's empty, so I've cleaned out there already. And um, this all comes out of there, so I'm going to repack just now. Okay, so this little exercise kept me quite busy. I unpacked all the bulges, port side, starboard side and the galley. And first I would wash out the entire bulge with vinegar. And then each and every single container had to be unpacked. Wipe down with vinegar, rags, repacked again, and then put back in the bowl just again. Yep, quite a job. So one of the things I need to do is everything that's laid flat, I must get upright. So there's no space for any mildew to grow underneath. So I'm going to start on my port side, um, the two cabins there, the mattresses and everything that's in it, just to lift it up. 
I'm still sleeping on our side, so I'd only be able to lift our mattress the morning when I leave, which is in three days' time. So come check out what I'm going to have to do. So at this point in time, Frank's brand new e-foil came. So that's taking up most of the space. I've already taken the dive cylinders off at the back because we don't want uninvited guests coming to do some shopping on Sisu and um, I've also emptied the cupboards out so there's nothing in here that can come to harm's way I've put everything out here so there's a bit there's a bit more of an open breeze here so I'm going to lift all of this everything upright so this is basically what I did in all the cabins, trying to avoid anything lying flat. So I tried to put everything as upright as possible. It is so hot down there, but I've done it. So um, correct me if I'm wrong with what I've done, but I've tried to um, make the actual contact surface with with the bottom as small as possible um, and this is what I've done now so I have this mattress is very floppy so the best I could do was twirl it so at least there's some ventilation going on over here and then the e-foil I've packed everything up right like that and this is affirmative shopping stuff lying over here so this makes for a perfect barrier that this mattress doesn't deep jump open again. So everything is upright. Now big question is, should I close the hatches and all the blinds? Because obviously this window is going to be closed. Do I leave it in darkness so it's a bit cooler? Can I leave these fans on for three months? Can they run on setting one for three months? And what I've done here on the port side, as I said, this mattress is brilliant. It can actually fold in two. So I've got all the front cockpit cushions, the mattress, the pillows, everything upright. And the saga to prep Sisu for about a three months stay on, on a mooring ball. Lots of stuff still going on. So as you can see, it's total chaos in here with all our BCs and some fans and some snorkels and masks oh, oh, I just wanna love you right. and still prepping the boat for going away um, I have to wash everything down with a water and vinegar solution I'm going to leave our head for last because I'll still be using it the whole day and tomorrow morning before I leave. So, yes, it's an ongoing process. I've done all the walls and all the cupboards and everything, so the last is the floors. Um, I think take 20 by now, <laughs> all the preparations that's going on. Um, oh, I've got one of these cables, I've actually got two of them, that I'm going to need to secure the dinghy motor with, because um, that is a big a bit of a concern that that can go missing. Another thing I've done is our fenders and our code D we've put into the lazarette quite a while ago, but they were still sopping wet, so I've taken them all out so that they can dry a little bit. I need to start flushing with fresh water. So the first thing I need to do is put some jig water or bleach water into the water tank. I've got more than half the tank still. Don't know if you can see in there. So I've still got more than half a tank. So what I need to do is to flush all three heads. I'm going to put vinegar in here first and then what you do is you flash all the heads until you smell the vinegar then you know you've you've gone through the whole system as well as opening all the faucets like in both the, both the heads 
the showers and remember we have bidets so those as well so everything that the water runs through the galley all the taps i need to run until i can smell jig water and then i know the jig has gone through okay so what we do with our holding tanks is first of all you close your seacock and then you close the holding tanks valve as well then you make a solution with water vinegar and baking soda and you pour that into your toilet bowl and then you start flashing your head until the light comes on to indicate that the holding tank is full then you let it sit there for a couple of hours and then what you do then is when you open your holding tank valve again i need to open and close again the seacock just for five seconds So that we are sure that everything is the water is all the way to to this area here so i'm going to close it one two three four five and then oh, close it again there we go we leave it like that until we return back to sisu i'm done okay so while i'm leaving this open we've got somebody that's going to come and check on sisu for us so i don't want him to go and wonder where the stuff on the boat is and then obviously our bulges i just unpacked and i uh, lifted our false floor here so that they can see immediately into it and then what i've done here in our room is i've put two of my bins under the mattress so the air can come through and we don't come back to a mattress that's walking around on the boat. Our solar panels are getting so much energy now. We're getting so much energy. Okay, we're at 69%. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave, as I said, the fans on. And at this point in time, I've got the underwater, uh, underwater lights on as well just to drain some more more batteries oh it looks like a disarray all my stuff is packed almost done ready to go fridges are defrosted freezers defrosted and i'm going to leave them open like this so what i've done is i put all my freezer stuff in our bank camp back camping freezer so if something should happen um at least if it goes off it will be contained at the back in the open so we won't come back to a smelly sisu so i think i am done i think officially i must get myself ready um, for my three flights to south africa this is now monday morning and i will only get there tuesday late evening almost at midnight i'll get there brooke's gonna pick me up and then we're going to go to my sister's guest house and she doesn't know I'm coming <laughs> so it's going to be a massive surprise can't wait to see her and then the next day my daughter my grandchildren <laughs>